Last week I've shown you that the Provence into France is one of the strongest way to play France in the entire game. And in this week I'm going to show you what you can do with a Giga France considering that you want to of course use everything of the mission tree most efficiently so that you end up having a huge empire very early into the game. And I'm going to show you this with the help of two national ideas and their policy, which is a very special policy between mercenary ideas and influence ideas. I'm the student and I present you the client state strategy, which makes every nation number one great power within a few years and it makes France the military hegemon on 1502. Okay, and this is the situation now in 1499. I'm going to uh, peace out now all of those nations. And uh, yeah, just so you know, actually I'm at war with, uh, yeah, basically the entire Holy Roman Empire that of course uh, doesn't exist anymore. But uh, you can see down on the war scores that, uh, yeah, if I hover over them, you see they are at 100% uh, war score basically in every single war over there as you can see. Um, some of them are 99 uh, as you can see this one over here but uh, anyways I can basically get whatever I want. Now of course I have co-belligerated a lot of nations which means that I can um, yeah, full annex them as you can see for example over here on Lübeck I can just uh, full annex them and you notice he is of course not the war leader and I don't have a single claim on them and that of course results in diplo points that I have to pay and that is also why I have uh, saved up such a high amount of diplo points because I'm of course going to do that with all of those nations and that will be quite a bit of diplo points. Now you can go down to minus 999 diplo points with that uh, peace deal mechanic but if you reach that point minus 999 then you can't peace out for any more provinces uh, that cost diplo points of course. 
And uh, that is also one of the reasons why I took influence ideas, because it gives unjustified demands. So basically this exactly that diplo cost. Minus 50%, which means that normally full annexing Lübeck would be 60 instead of 30 diplo points, which is of course a huge amount if you think about it, that I have to annex all of those nations right now. And of course, as I already showed, I have the client state act to create client states because I'm going to, of course, not keep all of that. I'm going to create client states and uh, feed provinces to client states because uh, client states can take more provinces than 100% overextension because you can give it to them via uh, this interaction over here and then select to a previous uh, already existing client state and that way you can give client state lands that they wouldn't normally able be able to accept if they were a normal vessel. Now before I do that let's uh, quickly talk about the French missions right here of course uh, the Empire missions. You see I've already chosen the option to dismantle the HRE and I have of, of course dismantled the HRE already. There are three missions that you basically have to fulfill which is number one you need the provinces of Switzerland which uh, in this case I cannot even full annex all of that uh, from Switzerland uh, so I have to uh, truce break them sadly uh, but anyways the AE will be huge anyway so it doesn't really matter but uh, yeah this one I just need 30 provinces in North and South Germany so easy right and this one I need to own Köln, Frankfurt and Aachen uh, which are of course this province, this province and this province so I can take all of them in this war. And then the last mission is of course the interesting thing, Declaratio Gallica, which uh, you need to complete all of those three missions first of course and you need to have 50 provinces owned in North and South Germany but they need to be owned with the province being the same culture as their owner. You would say now, oh man, that's really bad. You have to culture convert 50 province provinces. But no, I can assure you it's not that bad because you can see I have already fulfilled four out of 50 provinces. And those are the ones of my little client state over here that I plan to feed uh, them some provinces over here. Now client states have another uh, special ability apart from uh, that you can feed them infinite amount of lands of course, which is that the province that you release them in will be not only their capital province but also the culture in that province will be their primary culture. And that means that I'm now going to create client states in bigger culture groups of Germany, such as, for example, the Austrian culture. I'm going to have all of those provinces handed off to them, or the Bavarian culture, for example. And then I'm going to feed all of those provinces to the client state. And as the client state will be my subject, so I will fulfill the first requirement of that mission, which is owned by me or my non-tributary subjects. But I will also fulfill the second requirement, which is has owner's culture. And even though it is basically me that I own that through the subject, the direct owner is of course my client state. And therefore he has the primary culture that it needs to fulfill uh, that mission over here. And that mission over here gives me, of course, not only minus 5% all powers costs until the end of the game, which is <laughs> really nice, but also it gives me access to the military hegemony mechanic without the requirement of any troop count or something. So I can just straight up then click that thing without that requirement of 1 million troops, which is, of course, the biggest take back in a speed run for the military hegemony. Okay, so now I'm just going to quickly piece them all out, or <laughs> I mean quickly is uh, relative. Of course, I have only four diplomats, so it's probably going to take me a while. 
but uh, I'm going to piece them all out. I will have insane amounts of AE, but you notice I have truces with Venice, Genoa and Hungary and I'm of course still uh, allied to Poland, Lithuania, Bohemia, the Papal State and Castile with Aragon and Naples and Portugal actually. So the only nations that could really join my coalition will be uh, Denmark over here with uh, of course the unions, three of them actually, which cannot join as a independent nation of course, so only Denmark. And then it will be England and Scotland, which uh, by the way are just fighting so they won't join. Um, and then a few miners, of course, around the place like uh, Ferrara or uh, Serbia. Actually not Ferrara because I'm having already a spy network on uh, Styria. So as soon as I take those provinces, I'm going to attack them. Uh, so yeah, the coalition won't be that bad. Okay, and that is it right now. Uh, as you can see, I've already completed those two missions uh, and I could already complete that mission, of course, but now is the time to create client states. By the way, I have uh, I or I had a thousand percent uh, overextension, so <laughs> yeah, that's quite a lot. And uh, just to show it to you, that is what I meant with uh, why the client states are so OP. If I now want to feed them Frankfurt, you can see it is too much overextension and I can't feed it to them. But if I click on the province and on the client state thing and assign it to an existing client state, then I can give it to them. Okay, and now I have already enough uh, provinces fed to my cultural based uh, client states. As you can see, I have already fulfilled that. I just need, uh, yeah, those uh, two provinces or three provinces actually over here, which is uh, kind of annoying. But anyways, so the rest of those provinces doesn't matter uh, that much anymore. So I'm just going to feed them to existing client states so that I don't have that much problems with the Liberty Desire later. Okay, and this is now my diplomatic map mode. As you can see, I fed all of Germany to my five client states which uh, are of course super loyal uh, because they are client states after all and uh, also they have plus 40 percent because diplomatic reputation which is of course going to weigh in a second if i unpause as you can see there we go now i have only 39 percent overextension i'm of course going to put the war exhaustion down right now as far as I can and then before the Ottoman Empire joins the coalition as you can see <laughs> my client states of course uh, don't care at all about that 
but uh, anyone el everyone else cares. I am still able to keep that alliance with uh, Castile, I think. But uh, yeah, I have to basically declare the coalition right now before it gets uh, too big. And of course, uh, what my allies uh, is about, uh, yeah, they have of course uh, a lot of a lot of uh, modifiers from that, which is really bad, of course. But uh, uh, if they break the alliance, then they of course will have a truce with me, which means that as I just got rid of my overextension, I now need to win this war over here, this coalition war, which I'm going to take obviously. Uh, Mulhouse over there uh, as well as uh, probably some other provinces around Germany if I can uh, if the war score allows it of course. This is now the final moment in which I can finally complete my last two remaining missions which uh, of course I need those three provinces for and this uh, coalition that I'm fighting right here as you can see, mostly uh, Denmark, Muscovy and some miners will now give me that province and even one more province over there. For also a, a pretty long truce actually, as you can see. 10 years of truce. There we go. And also Venice over here together with uh, Switzerland is able to be pieced out. I'll just get uh, some money actually, some truce for seven years. That's fine. And now finally the last two remaining provinces of Switzerland. There we go. And <laughs> apparently even French Switzerland has now 50 aggressive expansion on me, but uh, anyways, I'm just going to give him those provinces and give that to Bavaria. And that is it. I can now push the Imperial line, apparently, <laughs> which is uh, quite funny uh, because I basically own the entire empire. But anyways, I get plus one military point and uh, some bonuses in those provinces and of course Declaratio Gallica which gives me cultural hegemony until the end of the game minus 5% all powers cost and access to the military hegemony mechanic in 1502 as you can see and uh, that means that I can now claim the military hegemony and uh, yeah, as you can see, it now will start growing even though I don't have 1 million troops. I'm not even close to 1 million troops, of course, right? But that is, of course, where I'm going to end that video. I have a coalition, as you can see, which is only a few nations. You have to see this coalition only consists of England, Tunis, Ottomans and then a few miners over here because I have of course a truce with Poland, Hungary, Bohemia and so on and uh, my client states of course have eliminated all of the German nations so what the plan basically would be right now with the newly proclaimed military hegemony I would have to uh, declare war on the coalition somehow, fight that coalition and then when the truce comes up with Poland, Hungary, Bohemia, attack them and expand and expand uh, and expand. Which uh, I'm not going to do for this video, but I think 1502 uh, military hegemony with uh, all of Central Europe basically owned by me or my subjects. I think that is quite a good achievement for this video. So I hope you enjoyed it and we are going to see in the next video.